Good morning and welcome to worship. We have had a great day celebrating Hannah and Wes's wedding. And thank you to those of you who came and stood in the street to welcome the bride and then to see them after as well. It's great for them to have your support. And as you can see, um, we've kept the flowers for now and uh, the hall was decorated in a lovely way, worthy of a wedding and that covenant relationship being formed. And we have a covenant keeping God, a God who is holy, a God who is free in one. And we're going to celebrate God, we're going to recognise who he is as we start our worship singing holy, holy, holy. Let's sing together, shall we?
am who you say I am, the God who just keeps talking to us and keeps affirming us each, every day. But sometimes we're not in a place where we perhaps feel that we are who God says we are. And that was the situation for, for Gideon. When the angel of the Lord, we're told, appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And Gideon responds, pardon me, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all, all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did the Lord not bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. Is that how you feel? Sometimes it is, isn't it, how we feel? But then J Judges chapter 6 reminds us that the Lord said to Gideon, he says, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? And so Gideon and the nation are in a problem. God says, just go and do it. And again, Gideon responds, pardon me, he says, my Lord, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. And the Lord answered simply, I will be with you. I will be with you. I am who you say I am. And God says to me and says to you, I will be with you. You call me out upon the waters into deep oceans. And then we make the prayer, Spirit lead me where my faith is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters because you are with me. We're going to sing oceans and then Danny is going to lead us in our prayers today.
Loving Heavenly Father, thank you that despite the circumstances of life right now, we're still able to worship together and learn about your word. Father, I ask that you help us to learn and understand the words from James, to use both of our ears to listen, to be slower to speak and be slow to anger. Listening is a powerful commodity and God, you designed us with two ears for that reason. Sometimes we hunger for someone to listen to us. So please help give us the guidance to just be still in your presence and to listen to you more than what sometimes some of us already do. Guide our hearts to be less angry by helping to further plant your word in our lives. As we go into a new week, Lord, let your words remain with us. Let us be reborn as followers to you and mostly help us to listen more to you and those around us. As we listen to you, Lord, help us in a way that we will obey your word and walk as Jesus walks in complete obedience to you, now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you very much, Sean Cumney. I see the light, and we thank you for your contribution every week. Now, I don't know what you saw when you first got up this morning and you looked in the mirror, and uh, what did what looked back at you when you've not got your makeup on and your hair's um, unravelled or what, whatever. I wonder how you really felt as you looked in the mirror. Um, if you're like me, I, I look in the mirror and if my hair's sticking up, I know it's time for a haircut. And then I don't need to look in the mirror for quite a while. But what did you see? Well, you may have looked quickly and then moved on and then gone back. And uh, some of you have gone back for longer than others, depending on how much work needed to be done. But as we think about looking in the mirror, um, we can, sometimes we can look in the mirror. You may have been, maybe like me, when you look in the mirror and you check something, you walk away and you think, hang on a minute, what was, what was that? What did I see? What was that? And then you go back and check again. Then you walk away and you forget why you went to the mirror. So you may look and uh, forget, walk away and forget what you actually look like. Or you may, if you look really closely in the mirror, I wonder whether you've looked or you've looked at the phone, if you're taking a selfie and you think, I look just like my, my dad, or I look just like my mama, or I can see the family resemblance. Do you ever think that? Well, for, for our children, you might look, and if you don't now, well, don't worry, because in 20 years' time, you will start looking like your parents, and that's when it gets really scary. But what do we look like? And what do you see when you look in the mirror? Well, the idea of a mirror, obviously, is so that we can look and we can see our reflection. And from that reflection, we can make decisions as to where we go and uh, what we do and uh, perhaps how long we need to stay before we go out. So we look to learn. And James writing in our passage today for us reminds us of this. And he says, well, when you read the word of God, when you read your, do your Bible readings, he said, if you read the word of God, then you shut your Bible and you walk away and you forget um, everything you've just read. He said, it was just like looking in that mirror when we look and we walk away and we think, now, was that straight or not? And so we have to go back and check. Well, if we, if we walk away and forget, then there's no point looking. And James is saying, if you read the word of God and then you walk away and then you forget what you've read, then what's the point of reading? We need to read and we need to look and we need to remember what we read, says James. And when we do that, then we will learn and we will change and uh, we will be better people because of that. And so next time you look in the mirror, don't look and then forget what you look like. Look and learn. And the same next time you read the Word of God, as we share together this morning, don't just look at it. Let's look and learn and allow it to change us and to change our outlook. And as we think about that, we're going to sing again. And uh, the Elson family are going to help us again. A song we used a few weeks ago, He's My Rescuer. And uh, when we get to the chorus, then you might want to shout with them. And uh, he's our rescuer, yes. And uh, let's sing together and be reminded and remember that our rescuer is Jesus.
a great song, isn't it? He's my rescuer. And thank you, Elson family, for bringing that to us again and for the enthusiasm that that song displays to each one of us. The YP Band are going to play a piece of music to us just now entitled Marching Saints. Let's enjoy the YP Band and then Erica is going to bring the Bible reading to us. Bible readers is taken from James chapter 1 verses 17 to 27. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of it, all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Amen. Thank you, Erica, for bringing the reading to us. And later on, Lynn will be sharing her thoughts on that passage from James. If you've been with us before, you might have spotted Erica singing with her husband, Graham, in our virtual congregation. Now, during lockdown, they have moved a couple of hundred miles to live closer to their children and their grandchildren. But in these strange days, we've not had a chance to welcome them properly. And when I say properly, I mean with handshakes, and hugs and no doubt a big round of applause. So Erica and Graham, we are really pleased that you have chosen to be part of the Walton family. May God continue to bless your new life as you live closer to your loved ones and may he bless your ministry too. And I'm wondering if any of you who have joined us since we started our online meetings also feel like you've become part of the Walton family. And maybe if you don't already have a spiritual home, you want to acknowledge that in some way, or perhaps to recognise a reconnection after some time away. Well, if that strikes a chord with you, and maybe your heart's beating a little faster right now, then just let us know. You can find our details by searching for the Salvation Army Liverpool Walton. Just send us a message at any time. 
And if you want to phone, then give us a ring in the mornings between Monday and Thursday. We would love to hear from you. And now we're going to enjoy the ministry of the songsters again. Here they are sharing pre-festival music from the Fairfield Halls in Croydon. Thank you, songsters. Thank you, Songsters, for sharing with us again this week. And as we continue in worship, we're going to have a word of testimony. And what is God saying? What is God doing? How is God working in us through these days? And Flora is going to share with us this morning. And then after that, again, a, a great song that certainly is becoming one of my favourites, Hear the Call of the Kingdom. And uh, again, just reminding us that the kingdom is moving and the kingdom calls us into action. I just want to thank God for this opportunity to be able to share with you my testimony in relation to COVID-19 experience. My testimony reflects on God's mercy and grace for having given me the courage, strength and inner peace that was sufficient to take me through as I worked as part of the frontline team in the local critical care unit. From the onset of news in relation to COVID-19, this raised a lot of concern and as part of the medical team, there were all necessary arrangements and preparations so that we would be adequately prepared to handle and manage cases effectively as need arose. This raised a lot of fear anxiety and apprehension, for none of us knew how it was all going to be. As time went by, the situation escalated and before long, there were so many cases coming in as a result of COVID-19, meaning that all we have been preparing for, we have to fully put it in practice. This required a lot of grace and divine intervention amongst all medical interventions policies and guidelines to manage the situation and at the same time prevent cross-infection. Due to the nature of my work, 
I can't share so much on this platform, but to sum up in brief, it was quite intense, challenging, and sometimes emotional. And I remember at the peak of pandemic, most of the questions we raised were, how long was the situation going to last? Is it weeks? Is it months? None of us seemed to have the best answer. It all looked so dark ahead and all I was to do is simply have a continuous trust in God for he is the sole creator of the universe and everything in it and he holds my and our future. The normal routine had come to suddenly stop and now we had to learn and adapt so fast to the new challenges as we faced COVID-19 crisis management. God gave us this strength as we worked. And usually it's at the end of the shift, after handing over is when one could feel the impact. I remember one time after finishing my shift, instead of going to change straight away to go home, I decided to go to the staff room to rest a bit and have a snack before heading home, only to realize that I was, the, I was not the only one some of my colleagues did too. It's at this point I thought came to me so clear and I just felt strengthened in my spirit at the point of grace, at the point of grace. And as I drove home, the same thought kept coming into my mind. And I remember starting to look deeper into what was all about God's grace, which eventually incorporated learning more about God's mercy. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, 16, the Bible encourages us that, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. There are so many benefits of God's mercy and grace when is it when it is upon us. This includes having a sense of inner peace in the midst of challenges of all kinds, love where it's undeserved, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The Bible encourages us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. This can only be realized when we decide to seek God in truth and in spirit. Hebrews eleven six encourages us that he who comes to God must first believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. Paul in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, he said that um, do not be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This was quite relevant to me, knowing that the very thing everyone is instructed to stay away from is the same thing I'm going to deal with which was quite a humbling moment before God. And I now chose not only to walk by faith, but to walk with faith. For when I couldn't do it myself, faith had to step in and do it for me. As an encouragement to myself, I decided to look for the point of grace song. I remember we had sung one time, not sure in the song star or in music school, though I couldn't find it at the time. So I decided to go on YouTube and search the point of grace. And I ended up finding the singers who call themselves point of grace. And uh, this, their songs really ministered to me. And two songs became quite apparent to me. God is good. And there's nothing greater than grace, the grace of God. Yet glory to God. I managed to find the lyrics of the song I was looking for, The Point of Grace by Dennis Jenica. And that really ministered to my heart, knowing that when I am at the end of my own strength, 
God's grace then becomes sufficient to carry me through. So why am I testifying? So why am I testifying today? It's because by God's mercy and grace, the situation has calmed down, and we are now trying to adapt to the new normal at my place of work, and also in the community and in my family. The COVID-19 storm was quite strong, but God gave us grace. It's calming down. Although the battle still continues, we know that the battle does not belong to us. The battle belongs to God. Where things didn't go as I desired or planned, I still chose, and I still choose to let him be God. For he is a good God, full of mercy and grace. Thank you to my family, my church members, the Salvation Army, my friends and colleagues who are really a source of encouragement and not forgetting the media team for your excellent work to keep us updated and encouraged. God bless the work of your hand. And thank you to God and the power of his Holy Spirit for enabling me to recognize that it's at the point of grace that all God's goodness and faithfulness in our lives is encountered. That is my encouragement, not only to me, but even to you, who is going through challenges one after the other. Remember, there is nothing greater than the grace. And it's only at the point of grace that we encounter the power of the cross. Amen. When the fire of life leaves you so dry That your eyes have no tears left to cry When heartache leaves you wondering why Oh, wondering how you will survive and when you've grown too tired to run the race or find your strength is gone without a trace when you've reached that lonely desperate place you have reached the point of grace and I will meet you there where your striving ends I will hold you there in my embrace and you
When your hopes and dreams begin to fade Disappointments clouding all the plans you've made Feeling lonely, broken, and afraid It seems so long since you have seen the light of day And when it seems like every trial you face Just leaves you one step Closer to the place where you fall away or reach for my embrace, child. You have reached the point of grace, and I will meet you there where your and I will hold you there in my embrace and you will find the place where true joy begins when you've reached the point of grace when you the point of grace Just let go and you will see Just how mighty love can be Child, your greatest strength is when you're Looking up from your brokenness to me And I will meet you there Where your striving ends And I will hold you there in my embrace and you will find the place where true joy begins when you've reached the point of grace. You will find the place where true joy begins when you When you've reached the point of grace. Sweet the
a great song. Thank you for sharing with us and hope you enjoyed singing that one. Jean is going to read a poem to us just now entitled Teach Us to Live. And then after that, we're going to listen to Four of the Bandsmen, um, a piece that has been used not just by us, but by several other corps around the territory um, as an aid to their worship, reminding us what a friend we have in Jesus. And so we'll listen to Jean and then the band, and then Lynn is going to open the word to us today. God of love, forgive, forgive, and teach us how to truly live. Ask us not our race or creed, just take us in our hour of need, and let us know you love us too, and that we are a part of you. And some day may man realise that all the earth, the seas, the skies, belong to God who made us all. The rich, the poor, the great, the small, and in the Father's holy sight, no man is yellow, black or white, and peace on earth cannot be found until we meet on common ground, and every man becomes a brother who worships God and loves each other. Amen. Item in your home. It might be the most expensive, it might not be, uh, it might just be sentimental value, but what can you think of that is the most valuable? For us, uh, Chris might not agree with me on this, um, but it's probably Nutter, our little rabbit um, that we've got. It's not a real one, I hasten to add, but it is in our home, and if you ask me personally, I might tell you the story, then again, I might not. But what to you is the most valuable? Verse 17 of our reading, we read that God gives good and perfect gifts to us. He knows what we need. You see, God is creator. He created the lights of heaven. That shows that he is creator. But it also refers spiritually to God being the light in every area. He never changes. He is the one constant in our lives. And because of this, he knows our needs and is able to give us every good and perfect gift. For those valuable items in your home, whether they're gifts, whether you bought them with your partner, whatever, God knows and is able to give us every good and perfect gift. James also reminds us in this passage that whilst he is creator, he is also our father and he has given us a unique role in the vast creation. We can fulfil that role by obedience to the word of truth. And in verse 18, it refers to the new birth by the Holy Spirit that we are given. We are told he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. This tells us what prompted him to save us. He was not forced to do it by anything we have done. He did it of his own free will. His love for us has no boundaries. It was entirely voluntary on his part. He brought us forth. He 
brought us forth into being by this spiritual birth. We became his children, a relationship that can never be changed, as a birth cannot be undone. The scriptures are the word of truth, and apart from the Bible, we would not know the way of salvation. We would not even know salvation was available, says William MacDonald in one of his commentaries. So through all this, we have become his first fruits. So what are these first fruits? The first fruit of the harvest was the first sheaf of ripened grain. And the Christians who, to whom James was writing were amongst the first believers. Therefore, the primary reference that he has and has given is to the Jewish Christians. The first fruits were offered to God in gratitude of his bounty and recognising that all comes from him and actually all belongs to him. Thus, as first fruits, says Romans, we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice. First fruits were the pledge of the full harvest of things to come. New believers to come. Eventually, Romans tells us again in Romans 8, 19 to 23, eventually the Lord will populate the whole earth with others like them, like the Christians that were there at the beginning. Others will come. But the full harvest will come completely when Jesus returns to reign over all the earth. So through all this, we can see that God has chosen us as his first fruit, or as the New Living, Living Translation puts it, his prized possession. We are God's prized possession. Colin Urquhart, in his version of the New Testament that he wrote in 2009, says, Through the word of truth, he chose us, he chose to give us new birth so that out of his whole creation, we are those who come first as his own children. We are God's own children, his prized possession. Doesn't that thrill you? I certainly hope it does. But to be his prized possession, just think back to that most valuable item in your house. Whatever that might be, you are worth far more than that to God. But with that comes a responsibility on our part as well. And we read of that in verses 19 to 27. Um, it is called by some commentators the practical righteousness. And in order to manifest ourselves as first fruits or prized possessions, we must be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. We must get rid of all filth and anger in our lives. We must humbly accept the word God has planted. Be swift to hear. We need to be ready to hear the word of God and as well as godly counsel that comes through conversation, we must be ready to hear what God says to us. We must be teachable by his Holy Spirit. We don't know it all. Day in, day out, you can look at one passage one day, look at it another day, and God says completely different things to you from the same passage. We need to be ready to hear what he wants us to hear. It's not enough to read just spiritual books alone, or Christian books alone is perhaps a better way of putting it. We need to open God's word. We need to meditate upon his word and glean from that word. We need to be slow to speak. And James, throughout his book, says a lot about our tongue and our speech. He cautions us to be guarded in our conversations. One tongue and two ears that we might hear from others twice as much as we speak is one of the sayings that we hear so often. We must be slow to anger. There is a right anger 
to have when we see injustices in the world, how we display it needs to be kept in check. But there is a right anger, but there's also a wrong anger. That wrong anger when you just flip, that anger that a quick tempered person might have, that doesn't necessarily show the kind of life that God expects from his children. It gives a wrong impression of a spiritual life of Christianity, of Christ. We need to get rid of all filth, get rid of those soiled garments that hinder our relationship with God. You know what they are, I know what they are in my life. Let's get rid of them, put them away, leave them. This includes all forms of impurity, whether physical, mental or spiritual. All forms need to be got rid of. We need to humbly accept the word. It's all too possible to read the word without letting it speak to us. We can study it without it let, letting it have an effect on the way we live our lives. Our pride, our hardness, our sin makes us unreceptive and unresponsive. Those things that we said get rid of, Let's get rid of them and humbly accept the word of God. We must be humble in spirit to get the maximum from God's word. The word is the implanted word, which is able to save our souls. Whether we take the word in this part of James to mean the word of God, which it does, or whether you want to look at the word meaning Jesus, Actually, God's word points to Jesus. He is the one that can make the difference. Throughout the Old Testament, we're pointed to Christ. He is the one. The scriptures, as I've said, point to Jesus. And it is through Jesus alone that we can be saved. But we need to obey this word, not just hear it, not just speak, let's obey it, let's listen. There must be a deep desire to hear God speaking to us and an unquestioning willingness to do whatever he says. We must translate the word into action. The word must become flesh in our lives. There must never be a time in our lives when we go to the word Go to the scriptures without allowing them to change our lives for the better. Let's not, as the passage says, look in the mirror and forget, as we walk away, we forget what we look like. That's no good. Let's remember what God wor God's word says to us. Let's not forget his word. So what about you and me? Do we see ourselves as first fruits, God's prized possession, his children? If so, let's continue to follow what his word says and act upon it. Let's remember the responsibility that, of what his word says. We must be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Let's lay aside those things that harm us and let's humble ourselves before him and his word now. Let's allow his word to be implanted in our hearts and let's be obedient to that word so that we don't forget it, but so that it makes a difference in our lives and the lives of those around us. So I go back to the initial question, what is the most valuable thing, item, in your own home, in your house? It's you. You are God's prized possession. You are God's child, his first fruits. You, it's you that God loves. And it's you that God cares for as creator, as our father. He loves each one of us. So let's be obedient to what his word says on our hearts and in our lives. And as we think on this, Becky, is going to sing to us a new song, 
be like Jesus. And it has the chorus in it, to be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. In every thought and deed, this is my aim, my creed. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me, his spirit helping me, like him I'll be. Let's think about God and his word and let's recognise that we are his prized possession as Becky sings to us.
to be like Jesus. What a beautiful song and beautiful words to sing. And for each one of us, that needs to be our testimony um, today that we want and we have the desire to be more and more like Jesus. Let's pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you because we know that you are our God, our Creator God, and yet you are also our Father. And Lord, we just come before you with thankful hearts because we are your prized possession. We are your children. And Lord, we just want to acknowledge that this morning, that you care for us, you love us so much. And Lord, help each one of us as we live our lives because of that responsibility that that brings. Help us to live our lives in the right way, in a way that brings honour and glory to your name. Lord, we make the prayer to be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. Help us to work through this, help us to carry this out in our everyday lives. We ask it in and through your precious name. Amen. And as we carry out that in our lives to be like Jesus. We sing together a song that we've used a couple of times or a few times. I dare to be different. I dare to believe. Let's enjoy this um, song together before we pray our benediction.
sing and a benediction together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. May you have a great week sharing together.